Now that you've shot a few time lapses, you may have noticed a few things. I want to go into three common issues that you may run into when running your time lapse. The first has to do with aspect ratio. If you haven't changed the aspect ratio setting of your camera, you may find that your time lapse videos don't fit on your television screen, meaning that if your camera is set to a 3 2 aspect ratio, it's not quite filling your screen. So, what you want to do is set the aspect ratio to a 16 by 9 or standard widescreen ratio to fill the screen of your TV. Let's see how to do that. Navigate to the photo menu, and then at the top of that, you'll see image quality, and under there, you'll find aspect ratio. From here, you can change the aspect ratio from 4 3 to 3 2, 16 by 9, or 1 to 1. You can also change this by going into the Q menu. This actually allows you to preview the change as you make it. So, there's a 16 by 9 ratio or even a one-to-one -one for Instagram. I'll leave mine at 16 by 9. The second issue you may encounter is where you set a specific image count, but you're getting less images than that. Let's say, for example, you set an image count of 100, but you don't have 100 photos. Well, there's some good reasons for this. If you set your interval time to be less than your exposure duration, then the camera is not going to be able to start the next exposure when it's supposed to. The interval time determines the time between the beginning of each exposure, not the time between exposures. So, if you have a one second interval and a two second exposure, well, the camera is not going to be able to take that picture at the next second because it's still taking the first one. So, that's the first thing to consider. Next is that noise reduction could actually play a part of this. If you have noise reduction turned on, which will automatically enable for longer exposures at higher ISOs, then the total exposure plus noise reduction duration will be double the exposure duration, meaning that if you have a 10 second exposure, you will have a 10 second noise reduction duration, so a total of 20 seconds for exposure and processing. So that's something you'll have to keep in mind when setting your exposure interval. The last reason might simply be that you're not giving any time for the camera to process the file and write it to the card before the next picture is made. So, for example, if you have a five second exposure and a five second interval, the camera actually needs a tiny bit of time to finish processing that file and write it to the card before it can start the next exposure. So, in that case, you want to set a one second longer duration than your exposure. If you're doing a five second exposure, set a minimum of a six second duration. If your goal is to simply have the camera shoot as many pictures as it can back to back, then just turn off the exposure interval. So, let me show you how to turn off noise reduction and how to turn off the exposure interval. To turn off noise reduction, go to the photo menu, and then on the top menu, image quality, navigate to the bottom of that to long exposure noise reduction, where you can turn that off. That will ensure that your camera is not adding any additional processing time at the end of the exposure. To disable the interval, go to the quick menu, navigate to the time lapse animation settings, then to shooting interval settings, and turn that off. And now with interval shooting off, the camera is going to shoot the photos as quickly as it can back to back. The last issue that you might run into is inconsistent exposures when you're in a controlled lighting environment. Let's say, for example, that you're shooting a time lapse in a studio like this. The lighting isn't changing, so the exposure should never change. So, why might it? Well, if you're seeing a slight flicker in the images, that could be because you're shooting at an aperture that is stopped down from the maximum opening on your camera lens. Why would that be? Well, let's say that you have a camera lens that's f2.8, but you're shooting it at f4. Remember that the aperture rings closing down are a mechanical thing inside of the lens that are moving. Anytime you're dealing with something mechanical like that, there can be micro inconsistencies between each time it's actuated. So, for example, if you're shooting at f4, Every exposure is not necessarily going to be exactly f4. It might be f4.05 or f3.95. These inconsistencies affect any camera on any lens from any manufacturer. What we need to do is avoid that aperture ever moving. So, how do we do that? Well, there's three things we need to do to ensure the aperture never moves. The first is to set the camera to either manual or aperture priority mode. That ensures that the aperture never changes because of the lighting. The second is to set the camera into manual focus. Why manual focus? Well, when you're in autofocus, the camera actually opens up the aperture to allow as much light as possible to hit the sensor to acquire autofocus quickly. So, to avoid that happening, you want to set the camera to manual focus so that the aperture never opens up. And the third one is something called constant preview. You want to turn constant preview on. Constant preview allows you to see the exposure as it will actually be recorded on the back of your camera at any time. Meaning, if you have your camera set to an underexposed image or an overexposed image, you're actually going to see that on the viewfinder or on the back of the camera. Well, why does that matter here? Well, if you don't have that turned on, then the camera is going to open up the aperture to show you a correctly exposed image on the LCD at any time, even if the shot would be darker or brighter. By turning on constant preview, the aperture will never change 
again, solving that problem with the micro inconsistencies and always showing us the image on the back of the viewfinder as it was going to be recorded. So let's take a look at how to turn that on. Go to the menu, navigate to the custom menu, and then under the monitor display photo page, go to constant preview and turn that on. With those three changes made, your aperture will never move, ensuring a consistent exposure between shots. With those three considerations, you'll ensure that you have the best possible quality time lapses every time. Panasonic.